Welcome to Studio 865. The future of local music is on the air. On, the air. on UTTV and WUOT FM. Proud partners with 90.3 The Rock and Metropole. Our guest on Studio 865 is Jennifer Nicely, who grew up here in East Tennessee and uh, now lives in Nashville. Mm -hmm. what's, what's Nashville like now that you, are you a spy for East Tennessee or has it become your home? <laughs> a spy for East Tennessee, I guess, yeah. I can't really say it's become my home. What's it like? I'm, I've always been, I've always had like this weird relationship with Nashville and part of me really likes it and right. there's another part. I'm basically the same way, even yeah. though I think I've made peace with it a little more recently, but um, I've, I've resisted feeling at home there, you know, even though it's still Tennessee, and, and when I've not lived there, you know, there was a period of time where I had lived there, and then I moved away, and, you know, there were things about it I missed, but um, it's a strange, it's a strange city, I think. Yeah. In, in, in an odd way, a lot of your songs sort of reminds me, uh, remind me of the, the situation with blues artists who grew up in the rural South and then went to Chicago and spent the rest of their careers writing about Wow, about I never home. thought of that. <laughs> and like, I, yeah. like Sycamore Tree, for example, is a song that you, that you play, and, and it's from Luminous, your CD. It sounds to me very East Tennessee. Yeah. W where did that song come from and what's its story? Well, to be honest, um, I was kind of having an acute case of homesickness, I guess, um, one day, and wrote this long poem about all the different scenes I would like to go revisit. You know, I was remembering and thinking about, I wish I could just go here and sit for a while, and I wish I could just go here. And But the poem was kind of, there were too many words, and you know, it was a little too sentimental and cheesy, basically, at the end of the day. And I ended up turning you know, that ended up being the, um, I guess, the genesis for Sycamore Tree. I took out specific um, images and and made it more, uh, well, I think it's really ended up being a song about transcendence, you know, but it came from Missing Home. There's a bank where the cedar and the sumac grow. They know, they know, they know. Wherever I go, whatever I follow, a part of me never leaves there. A part of me is always breathing that river
It feels very much like rural East Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. I can almost hear little crickets and stuff <laughs> in there. <laughs> right. Do you start out a lot of your songs as poems? Yeah. And what, what, what makes a song stay a poem and, and, one, and, and a, another song make it to the next level or to the other level? I don't know, really. You know, it's kind of mysterious. I, there's sometimes, sometimes I try to, uh, to make a poem into a song and it just doesn't work or maybe the subject matter just isn't at the end of the day something I really want to be in a song you know well what, what how, how much poetry do you have out there that's not music I mean do you do you spend a lot of time writing poetry and more than you would say songs no a lot of times it's actually a mixture it's a prose sort of thing you know that's um, poetic but not necessarily a poem and then I take stuff from that and turn it into a song. And you talked about in this one that, that, that you didn't want it to get too sentimental. Yeah. Now I notice a lot of songwriters say that they have a, a, a deep fear of a song being too sentimental. I'm going to ask you what's wrong with that, as hmm. to paraphrase Paul McCartney. <laughs> um, well, I guess there's a time and place for it, for yeah. sure. I mean, I think some songs, I know there's songs that are sentimental that I love, you know, and that are out there. Like Moon River. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know what it's about, but it makes me feel very, very uh, wistful and uh, right. nostalgic for a time that probably didn't exist yeah. to begin with. Right. Yeah. Well, Romance in the Dark, this is a cover, I believe. Yes. And tell me, tell me where you found this song. And Well, basically, um, some friends of mine who are great blues artists. They actually live in Iowa. But, um, that blues capital. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's strange, but they're really great. And um, they saw me play and, and asked me if I'd ever heard of Lil Green. And I said, no. And they're like, oh gosh, you've got it. You know, there's something about her voice and the way she sings that's similar. There's just something there. So, and they told me about that song. And so I found it online and read about her life, and I just couldn't believe I hadn't heard about her. In the dark, it's just you and I. No, there's not a sound, not one sigh. Just the beat of my poor heart in the dark. In the dark, I get such a thrill when we press 
his fingertips upon my lips and he begged me to please keep still in the dark oh but soon this dance will be in and you know you know it's gonna be missed We will find what the rest have left behind. Let them dance, we're gonna find romance in the dark. In the dark, it's just you and I. Not a sound, no, there's not one sigh. Just the beat of my poor heart in the dark. Now in the dark I get such a thrill when he presses his fingertips upon my to please keep still in the dark oh but soon this dance will be ended and you know you know it's gonna be me What the rest, what the rest have left behind. Let them dance, we're gonna find romance in the dark. And that song was her, her first hit in 1940, and she wrote it, and it's it's kind of one of those songs where I wonder, you know, should I even do this because I'm not doing it justice? But it's really fun to sing. I think you do it justice. Well, you yeah. haven't heard the original, have you? <laughs> well, that's a good question. And um, in, my, in my mind uh, of what it would sound like. The future of local music is on Studio 865. An old cover penny like me. Sam Houston was the man that kept his word. Don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where I've been. I'm Todd Steed, host of Studio 865. The future of local music. Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8. Only on UTTV. Comcast Channel 194. Studio 865 is proud to partner with 90.3 The Rock, UT's College of Rock, and Metropulse. Complete music and entertainment listings, the event calendar on Metropulse.com. I like the way that you, you take older singing styles, but yet they're not, they don't sound old, like when you do them. I mean, oh, you, you obviously listen to some of the classic, I think, some of the classic jazz singers and, and maybe even people like Joni Mitchell, I think I hear occasionally in there. How do you take all that stuff and meld it into your own? I don't know. People have asked me that before, but I think it, for me, I, I was singing from, I was singing and singing my own songs even by age 11. And so I always felt like I had my own voice. Wow. You're, you're 
What kind of, do you still have those 11-year-old songs <laughs> still around, or those? They're probably on some cassette somewhere, yeah. unfortunately, but. <laughs> what's a cassette? I don't remember <laughs> what those are. What's, what's left with the cassettes? Which brings me up to my next question. Um, you have a really great new song, and, and I heard it for the first time today, What Wild Is Left? which is a great title, and when, as soon as you said the title, I said, oh, I'm going to like the song. <laughs> a lot of times uh, the title is, is, is kicks it off for me. Um, where did this come from? Well, I'd had that phrase and that idea around in my notebooks and in my mind for a while, but it really came recently, you know, this early summer, late spring, being in Nashville, and kind of, like I said, making peace with being there a little bit more and realizing that... Um, well, I'm here, I'm in the city, I'm living here, I've been living here, and um, there's actually a lot of wild things growing, you know, that I can connect with. What wild is left keeps Side abandoned buildings. Rain, rain, rain makes them stronger. But come and drive, and none will last longer. Trumpet, passion, honeysuckle vine, pokeweed, chickweed, thistle, dandelion. What why? to our little lives, all our little lives, makes me think about you and me, we're trying to be strong, we're trying to live. The whole thing about weeds being so resilient, and a lot of them actually have, you know, medicinal value, but they're so maligned. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just they have their own story, you know. People, people mow them down. People forget about them. People don't see them, you know. But they're just everywhere. And then you know how it is in Tennessee, in the city, in the urban landscapes. In the middle of the summer, there'll just be these huge things growing, you know. 
right beside a parking lot or whatever. And yeah. it's, I don't know, I love it. <laughs> I did too, and, I, and I, I remember I had a very weird experience with a weed once. <laughs> that didn't sound right. Um, but I saw this beautiful flower, and I said to someone, wow, look at that beautiful flower. I wonder what kind of flower that is. And they said, oh, that's just a weed. Well, what's the difference? If uh, it, you know, I, see, I don't, I don't that's understand. It. What, what, what makes a flower what makes a weed? Yeah, it's just us, right. our perspective. So, This song is called Black Swan. Black Swan Sing all morning Sing the whole day long While the fields are burning Gather the evening mirrors Mount into the twilight Marvel at how things Autobiographical, perhaps? Well, yeah, a little bit. That's funny you picked up on that. Um, yeah. It's kind of a song to myself in a way. I guess that sounds, on the one hand, a little egotistical but or narcissistic, but um, it transcends that, of course. You know, it's kind of just like about transformation and how, you know, be in the moment and pay attention to everything, but keep your eyes on where you're going, too. You know, don't lose sight of that. And also, you know, the Ugly Duckling story. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Familiar with the first half, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, I can relate to that, too. Okay. So. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and and do, are you, I think you have a great record in you, it sounds like, coming out. Uh, yeah. With all these, all these new songs. Are you in the process of making one? or? Not making it yet, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm planning it. I'm thinking about it. I'm writing songs for it thinking about how I want it to sound. Yeah. It's a little more acoustic, I think. I think it's going to be more acoustic. Are you still going to play the black Dan Electro on yeah. it? Or in the yeah, amp? I would think so. I love that sound. I do too, and it's, 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 it's nice because a lot of the, uh, people would automatically, if they wrote so some of these songs, would probably say, oh, this, is an, uh, uh, this is for acoustic. Right. And then you come out with the, the Vox and the Dan Electro, and it just it, it adds a nice dimension to it. Thanks. So when, when do you start making this record, and when? I don't know. I'd love to start in the fall. 
you know, I guess it's all up to me. <laughs> yeah, you have to ask yourself. <laughs> and Luminous is already is already out there and ready. It is. It can be found it is in out there. all the typ typical places. Yeah. I guess the first place to look would be online. Yeah, C CD I saw Baby. it on CD Baby. Yeah. yeah, it's a great record. Thanks. Yeah, I, I look forward to the new one. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so back much. Back to East Tennessee. My pleasure. Next time you come back, I want to ask you about the things you don't like about East Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, so be thinking <laughs> about that. Uh, my guest on Studio 865 has been Jennifer Nicely today, and uh, she'll be back again in a few months to talk about more about East Tennessee and Nashville <laughs> and who's going to win. <laughs> thanks uh, for tuning in. Jennifer, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a few months. All right. Studio 865 is proud to partner with 90.3 The Rock, UT's College of Rock, and Metropulse. Complete music and entertainment listings, the event calendar on Metropulse.com.